Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and today I am going to be taking a look at a module for Basic Fantasy RPG. This is my look at Monkey Isle. Let's roll it. Monkey Isle is a 54-page softcover booklet. The last two pages of the book include the OGL license, as well as a print indicator on the very back page. So you have 52 pages of actual content in it that you can use. And it's got a lot in it. The book follows the standard guidelines for all the basic fantasy RPG modules. It's got a Typical headers that are very clean and well thought out. Nice sans serif font in order to be very readable either on screen or on the page. It's got decent tables which have good indicators for where different rows end and begin. And it's got Chris Gonnerman's wonderful contribution to gaming books. Those wonderful little check boxes that mark off the hit points for the creatures and all of the different encounter blocks. This is something I absolutely love about Basic Fantasy RPG and the way it's presented. Such a small little tweak, but it adds a lot to its usability. There's one nitpick I'd have, and that's to add an alternating row color to the different tables. Not entirely necessary because there is a line that separates row from row and it's easy enough to follow it across but I like the look of the alternating row color a little better, so that's just personal preference on my part. The cover art is by Cameron Dominic, and it is beautiful. This idea of a warrior in face of this giant dragon or dinosaur, you're not entirely sure which, in this ancient area, and it conveys this sense of wonder and imminent danger, that there's a threat somewhere out there in the mist, and it's really cool. It evokes the setting for Monkey Isle so well, and I'm very appreciative of it. The other artwork in the book is not a lot. It's mostly pencil, black and white inks. It conveys something nice about the different creatures you can encounter, and occasionally it highlights the way an encounter should be set up. I would have liked to see a little more artwork in the new creature section at the end of the book, but this is an open source project and people are donating their art to it. So you really take what you can get, you work with the community and you make the best of it, and Monkey Isle does that. The adventure itself is a Lost World hex crawl, very much an homage to Isle of Dread, X2. That's the module that came with the expert set way back in the late 70s and early 80s. And it does a pretty good job paying homage to this earlier module. Not a whole lot given to the players in order to hook them into the adventure, however. There's a couple of little ideas that are thrown out there. A pirate encounter and an elven trading vessel could come alongside you and lead you to this isle. Um, but that's really about it. And for that reason, I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner GM. I would spend some time doing some more basic crawls until you get your feet under you and you're able to roll with the world because in a sense in a hex crawl like this you're building the world as you go it's not entirely set and you need to have a little bit of background on how to do that before you attempt something on this biggest scale the islands themselves are described on a single page of two column text there's not a whole lot that's given to it again there's a lot that's left up for the gm there there are, however, six villages that are given a small write-up and some ideas for what players could actually encounter there, and these become areas where players might be able to find a respite to sell wares, to repair damaged goods or armor, and maybe even encounter a little bit of danger. So it's a nice color to the setting, and it means that you're not entirely cut off from the rest of humanity while you're out exploring this island. One of the cool additions inside the module, however, are a group of sentient apes who exist on the island. And you can go encounter them, and the apes will interact with you, and they're going to be a little alien. They're not going to be thinking exactly the way that humans and other sentient species do. They've just kind of gained sentience relatively recently. And this inclusion of a Planet of the Apes encounter here in the middle of this tropical island really speaks to me. I thought that was one of the neatest additions to the book. 
So as I pointed out, this is an old school hex crawl. In fact, the players are given a map that only has the very outer hex of the island mapped out. And as they go through, they're going to be filling that out as they go. That's the way an old school hex crawl actually works. Something that's a little bit of a lost art, but I'm glad that they're doing it here for this. And with most hex crawls, you're creating the island as you go, because if there's not a numbered encounter in the hex that people are going into, the GM has to describe what's there and roll for a random encounter. And the random encounters are going to determine what the players meet here. GM's going to have to take a note of that to what's here in this area. Maybe they were just flying overhead or just passing through, or maybe the random encounter actually lives in that hex, and now that's part of this island moving forward. It's really cool. And as with Isle of Dread of Old, there are different encounter tables to roll on depending on what section of the aisle or around the islands you actually are. This is a really neat addition, and it's something that I, I'd love for more folks to experience as they go through their, their games in the modern era. Among the numbered areas on the map, there are designations R1 through 6, and these are, in fact, mini crawls. There are maps for these crawls in the back of the book. Would like to see them closer to their key, but it works where they are. You can always download the PDF and print them out as you need for when you're trying to figure out how to set up the encounters for your group. So it's not a huge deal, but it's a little bit annoying flipping through the pages. It's something that happens in all the basic fantasy modules. These mini crawls show a nice variety, including an underwater exploration. Players have to figure out how to breathe down there, and there's a good way that they do this. And also a place where you're going to an old abandoned city where you're going to encounter a dragon. And anytime you encounter a dragon is just a time for celebration for me. The crawls are really well set up. The maps are nice. They offer a good mix of creatures and traps and other troubles. It should offer a lot of fun for the players who are delving into the depths of the island and they want to uncover what's there. Really fun stuff. The book ends from page 44 to 52 with a new creature section. This includes a lot of dinosaurs. It is a lost world setting. We're going all the way back to like a Jules Verne concept here. Uh, giant insects, gargantuan creatures that might otherwise feel familiar. And there's just a lot of variety in this that makes Monkey Isle feel distinct and a little bit alien to the folks who are exploring it. When you see a sloth that's the size of an elephant, suddenly you realize you're you're not in your hometown anymore, and I like that. Now, there are some things that I would change in this book. These are mostly nitpicks, and they're just things that really stick out to me. I've already mentioned an alteration of the tables and putting the maps near where they are keyed inside the flow of the book. This is something that's just part of the entire basic fantasy RPG style guidelines for folks who want to release their modules with basic fantasy RPG. And so that's something that have to be talked about among the project as a whole, and it's just personal preference on my part at that point, so it's not a big deal. But there are some tropes and some language in the book that leave me feeling a little bit uncomfortable. And the reason for this is because the Lost World concept comes to us from the 19th century, and this is kind of the last golden era of European colonialism and expansionism. And I understand people are going to go, oh, there's no politics here, but let's hear me out for a second here. The Lost World concept is great because it gives you a sense of mystery and exploration and going out into the unknown that's really part of the heartbeat of old school Dungeons and Dragons and, by extension, basic fantasy RPG. And this is great, especially for people who feel they live in a space that is too known, that there is no more adventure, that there is nothing more to explore that's out there. And the Lost World offers people that possibility. So for that reason, I like the Lost World concept. It's actually pretty cool. But because it's coming from that 19th century well, it's going to contain concepts and ideas that just don't fit anymore in 2022. There's two that stuck out for me in this book that I tweak a little bit. The first is the generation of these boogeyman natives who are using the, the lip plugs and they have black teeth and yellowed skin and they're cannibals. And this very much 
harps off of old European school fears of what existed in the interior of Africa back in the 19th century. And so it's just being carried over. This is part of the, the lure that has been carried through in this lost world idea. Gives me a little bit of pause. I don't necessarily want to be depicting the alien in this way. But the interesting thing about this is that the folks who have turned these different groups into these black teeth, yellow skin, lip plug wearing cannibals aren't necessarily natives of the island. They could be from the mainland because they're described as specifically going to this tribe of people so that they can use them to conquer the island. It's old school colonialism at work here. So that is an interesting twist on it. I think I might be able to play with that. The other one that just gives me a little bit of pause is the use of the word pygmy, which comes from a 19th century description of the peoples of the forest as the pygmoids. And it's generally considered to be a slur today. The people who make up these tribes want to be talked about as their people group or generally the people of the forest. And just want to treat them with a little bit more respect for who they are at this point rather than using an old trope that is generally seen as a negative nowadays. These are just two things in the book that I would tweak a little bit, maybe highlight something about the, the village of the skulls that gives more of a sense of this is not typical for the area because on the island, most of the natives are described in a much more favorable light. And then for the pygmies, I just change it to people of the forest and that would pretty much alleviate a lot of my concerns. This also, however, highlights the genius that is Basic Fantasy RPG as an open source game because you don't just have the ability to buy a copy of this off of Amazon or Lulu or download the PDF from the Basic Fantasy website. You can download the word processing file that's got all the information there. And if you want something tweaked or, or altered or changed, you don't have to just make notes on a printout. You can change it right inside the book and then print it out yourself as you wish. And the cost should come out about the same as what it costs to actually buy a copy from Amazon because they only sell them at cost there. This is one of the coolest things about Basic Fantasy RPG, and it's one of the reasons why I recommend the system. Because you're able to do things with the materials that you're just not able to do in as comprehensive a way as you can with Basic Fantasy RPG. Also, it's got a great community behind it. Chris Gonerman is wonderful, and it's just really cool. So all three reasons why I recommend this system, despite it's got some things that I might want to tweak. Now, this is a really cool Lost World adventure. It is a genuine homage to Isle of Dread from back in my youth, and I appreciate it for that. It is a true sandbox in that there's no central place to get to that you can go and arrive at to unlock some of the mysteries of the island. That is completely left up for the GM to map out with the players as they go out and explore. So it's a little different in that vein, but I really like it nevertheless. Even though there's no goal inside the island except to be there and see what's out there, that's enough. There's enough to keep you interested. Now, as I pointed out, you may get this PDF from the Basic Fantasy RPG website for free. That's an easy way to buy in. And if you want to go to Amazon and buy a soft cover print copy, you can buy it for the whopping price currently, as of this recording, of $3.75. As I mentioned before, you want to make a change to it that's going to be a little bit more deep, go ahead and download the word processing file, get yourself LibreOffice, and make all the changes you want. That's the cool thing about Basic Fantasy RPG. Before we finished, I've got a couple of announcements. The first is I've set up a website. DMTales.com is live. And this is where I'm going to be posting links to a lot of my videos, but also doing written reviews as well as different reflections on my gaming. So if you want to come and see what else I'm doing out in the world of TTRPG playing and reviewing and writing and all that cool stuff, go visit DMTales.com. I'll put the link down in the description. The second announcement is that this website is being partially funded by my new Patreon. I love making content for DM Tales. I love being able to write and to share and to play and do all these cool things with the folks who have 
been part of this journey right from the start of when I opened up this channel. This is a way of helping me expand a little bit more to improve the quality of the video, maybe grab a new mic, maybe do a light or two, that sort of thing, but also to be able to procure more books and back Kickstarters and spread the love out into the community at large. And if you want to become a patron of DM Tales, I would be most appreciative. I've got two tiers. The first is just to buy me a cup of coffee that gets you access to my Discord server and voting rights on whether I'm going to back one Kickstarter or another. And when I have a juggling match as to which of the next reviews I want to do, you'll get to vote and tell me which one I'm going to do next. Yay! The higher tier includes those benefits, but also will give you access to PDFs of any one-shots that I create, as well as lore from the different fantasy worlds that I've generated for my campaigns. And the first one-shot that I've got coming out is going to be an easy D6 adventure called Hometown Harvest. This is a Howl Mark adventure. It's a fantasy adventure done in the vein of a Hallmark movie. Don't knock it till you try it. But this has got a really cool bent to it, and I'm looking forward to making it available for everyone. So if you want to become a patron, I'll leave that link in the description below as well. The third thing is, I hope I get this video out before Friday because I'm heading to PAX U Friday afternoon and all day on Saturday, and I'm looking really forward to it. I've been trying to get to this thing for three years. And by the end of that, I'm hoping that I have a lot of content to share here on this channel, and I'm looking forward to sharing my experiences with all of you. After I get through the PAX U material, I'm going to pick up a game that I've been meaning to review for a while. Also created by Chris Gonerman, who created Basic Fantasy RPG, I'll be taking a look at Iron Falcon, which is his take on a zero-generation Dungeons & Dragons game. What really got me to do it now, however, is he just released a new book that's a variant on the game which uses the same core rules that takes place on Earth in 1975 as magic is awakening and your characters have to figure out how to deal with it. So it's got the Shadowrun vibe, but it's more of a 1970s era production. I want to see what this is like and I'm so looking forward to reviewing it for all of you. But until we see each other again, Happy playing, everyone.